Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I am talking all about breastfeeding and just all the things that I've gone through on my own breastfeeding journey with my son, Matthew. In my last video, I was talking all about mastitis and just the whole episode of that and how many times I've had it and what I did with it and how it ended me in the hospital and all of those things. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I will link that up here. Today, I'm just gonna talk about the routine that I go through if I notice that I'm starting to get a clogged duct now or anything like that. I kind of start going through these things and so far, so good, fingers crossed, knock on wood, all of the things. I haven't had mastitis in four months now, three months, something like that. First thing that I always need is my haka. If you do not have one of these yet, get one. Uh, it is worth the investment, however much they were. Um, I had them on my registry and then I had a friend that actually gave me another one. So I have two that just in case one is being uh, washed or needs to be washed, I always have another one ready to go. So this is important. The next thing is Epsom salt. This is just a bag that I got from Walmart. It's not super expensive, but you need a bag of Epsom salt and just plain, no flavored or scents or anything like that. But I just put like a little less than a tablespoon and hot water in this and then just suction that onto my boob and let it kind of soak for about 10 to 15 minutes. And I'm not sure like what exactly it's supposed to do, but it always feels a ton better afterwards. So when I was brand new to this whole breastfeeding journey, I wasn't sure how to work this thing. So just in case you're new and you don't know how to do it, you just fold the top down Oops. Pull the top down like so. Squeeze the middle of it like that and then suction it onto your boob and fold that over and then whenever it's on your boob that will stay in and then eventually it will fold pop back out. So that's how you do that if you don't know. So once I have done the whole Epsom salt and soak and all of that, the next thing, especially if I have like a, a cut or just like a, I had a blister a couple of weeks ago and stuff and so I was trying to like nurse that, but lanolin cream, this is just the best. This works wonders whenever I'm using this. So this is also very important. The next thing you want are warm compresses. So I have two different things. Uh, again, I am not affiliated with any of this stuff that I'm talking about, although if they see this and they'd like to partner up, let me know. Uh, but these are a little, they've got like the beads in them and these can come off. So this kind of folds over and you can wash these. But these are from Baobe, I think is how you say their name. Um, I found them on Instagram way before I was ever pregnant. And I just really liked the stuff and their supplies and, and whatnot for, for mamas. So these I will heat up in the microwave and then just kind of like stick them on the sides of my boob, whichever one is hurting, just to kind of help get that heat and... I guess loosen things up if that's what needs to happen. The other ones that I have, these are one, um, um, one of my friends gave these to me, but these are, um, I think they're the Lansino brand, which is what this uh, nipple cream is. But these are nice because, let me hold one. They have little snaps on them. And so you just, you can snap these around your pump or whatnot, and they just kind of heat up the your flanges. That's how I've been using them and I like these a lot. So these are just, these get really hot compared to my little um, Bayo Bay ones. So they're just something to watch for. And the next thing I will do is anytime, you know, so every day, maybe twice a day, depending on how bad I feel this clogged duck is, uh, take hot, hot showers. I mean, as hot as you can possibly stand it and make sure that it's just hitting right there on your boob. And so I will stand and just kind of like because it's always tends to be like the outside part of mine and I will just stand there and let the water hit and then just like massage as much as you can, as hard as you can, like stand, just massage, massage, massage. Um, I also will use, if I'm pumping or whatnot and if like at night, whenever I would um, was still pumping at night, I would get, we have a massage gun and I, I know, I said it in my last video, I, that sounds like it would hurt really bad. I promise it doesn't, it actually feels really good. Um, but I would just get the massage gun and just do that for as long as I was using the haka with the Epsom salt. I would just sit there and like work that all over my boob and just let that kind of massage out as well. The other thing that I use that I just say use this sparingly because I've seen so many different things on the internet and with other doctors and whatnot. So use it, advise with your doctor, but just use it sparingly. So again, my friend gave me this stuff called Cabo Cream, I think is how you say it. 
and I'm pretty sure she got this online on Amazon, but this is like a cabbage kind of thing. So you've heard, or if you've heard, they can say that you can get some cabbage leaves and put those around your boobs and that can help. But I have also heard that that also helps dry you up. So I don't know which one is, is right. I don't know, but I will use this like once a day and I put it on at night usually, like right before I go to bed. I'll put it just a small amount and then just rub it right wherever the, the clog is. So I haven't had any problems with my supply yet. So that's just my advice and that's what I use and do with this kind of stuff. Something else that I got that I mentioned in the last video that was kind of pricey are these little silverettes. So there are two of them and this is kind of how thick they are and that's how wide they are. If you look at like the size of my palm compared to them. Uh, these are really nice. They do help heal um, your nipples if you have like cracks or you know, blisters or anything like that. So I use these like if it's a really bad case and I just can't get whatever is going on to heal right, I'll bring these out. But I also mentioned that not so much now because I haven't had to use these in a little bit, but when I was using these and Matthew was younger, I could tell that it would take him longer to latch on to me whenever I had had these on. So I would have to take them out 15, 20 minutes before I knew he was going to nurse and that way whatever was going on with these it wasn't bothering him one other thing that i do every single day is take sunflower lecithin so this is the big bottle that i get on amazon it's got 200 soft gels in here uh, i try and take them twice a day if i really start noticing that i've got a clogged duck or something i'll take it three or four times a day and that's what's instructed um, but whenever i had mastitis and stuff these are what i've definitely taking and again I started taking them four times a day um, this is supposed to I think just make your milk not as like sticky I think is what um, I saw and whatnot so but this is recommended a ton from the lactational consultant that I follow that I talk to in the hospital and everything like that so um, you'll see if you ask around this is something maybe not this specific brand there's tons out there this is just the one that I use um, it just seems to work a little bit better. So again, daily I take this at least once. I usually take it in the morning with all of my other vitamins and then once before I go to bed and twice a day is the normal, just kind of maintenance dosage. But this has been great, so this is always a must for me. So those are kind of my tips on, or, or my routine I should say, on what I do if I'm getting a clogged duct to try and help prevent me from getting mastitis. Time out, I totally forgot. The most important thing when you're trying to prevent getting those clogged ducts and mastitis is your baby. Hello. They're gonna have the best suction over a pump at any time. So make sure that you're latching baby as much as possible if you think you've got a clogged duct. And again, like I said in my last video, make sure that their chin is pointing towards the direction of wherever you think you have a clog and that's gonna help relieve that pressure. Now I'm gonna talk about some prevention tips and just things that I realized late in the game that I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? So the one thing that I had heard from the beginning um, that I've been very, very um, aware of is just not putting pressure on your boobs. So like no underwire bras. Uh, if you are working out your sports bras, making sure they're either one, if they're too tight, making sure that you know you get them off fairly quickly after you work out. And along those lines, something else that one of the lactational consultants um, at the hospital talked to me about that I didn't realize, and this was after I had already been in the hospital with mastitis, she said to make sure that you're not sleeping on your side too much. I hadn't even thought about that. I know like laying on your stomach would just you know push and put that pressure on the front, but I hadn't thought about sleeping on her side. So. At night, it's probably because I have that in the back of my head, I'm constantly like switching sides when we're sleeping now because I don't want to, because I like to sleep on my right, which is again on the outside where I always have my problems. And so I try to make sure that I'm not sleeping on that side too much. If that if that is part of what my problem was in the beginning, just want to try and alleviate it now. And this is something that I, when I, like I said, I talked to a lactational consultant I think I was six weeks postpartum, six or seven weeks, so I'd already had mastitis once and I was about to get it another time because I had seen, and I, I reference this um, person on Instagram a lot because I just love this account, but it's called Milky Mama. I'll link, I'll put that right down here and I'll put it down in the, in the description below, but I had seen a story one day and normally if you're on Instagram and they have stories and they're like teeny tiny little ticks, you know that there's like a thousand of them and that just drives me crazy. But for some reason I watched it this day and it was, she was talking all about flange sizes. And I did not know the importance of having the right flange size for your pump if that is the route that you're going 
because it can totally impact your supply and lead to clogged ducts. And that I think is part of the biggest part of what happened to me in the beginning because I was having problems with Matthew latching because of things that happened in the hospital and him kind of feeling like he wanted a bottle more than me and all of the things. And so I was pumping a lot more than I was, I think, breastfeeding and then I had the cut and again, all of the things. So I realized that I was using the flange sizes that originally came with my pump, which were like 21s. And I had talked to a lactational consultant in the hospital. She showed me how to use it, but she never like sized me. And so I made that suggestion to her whenever I went back, I said, you know, I walked with someone like through this, how to work this thing and everything. I said, and it would be really nice if you guys would talk to new moms and measure them. That way they can, you know, be aware and be ready to go when they're at home and whatnot. So she took that. I hope that they're taking that under advisement and maybe making a change, but I think that would have helped me tremendously if somebody had just sat down for a few extra minutes and like just measured my nipples with me because you know as a new mom you have no idea what you're doing so i say all of that to say that i was using 21s on both sides and on both sides and most of the time your nipples are probably not going to be the same size right so i use a 17 on one and a 19 on the other so those are very different sizes when you look at how big a 17 is versus a 21 that was making a huge difference on my supply and just on my output so just keep that in mind. That's probably the most important takeaway of anything out of this video is make sure you have the right flame size. And last but not least, if you are not familiar and you do not constantly like check your boobs right now as it is, ladies, you need to get very familiar with your boobs. I am one that is, and it did not do this beforehand. And now I am constantly like feeling of my boobs and checking around and making sure that there's no uh, like lumps or anything like that. And checking your nipples constantly for the tears and the cuts and the blisters and all of the things because one little thing can go wrong. And like um, I said a couple weeks ago, I had a blister and it's because I didn't, when I was pumping um, during the day, I pump while I work. Um, while I was pumping that time, I didn't pay attention and I think I had not like quite centered up the flange quite right. And I think my like nipple was just rubbing while it was pumping. So, and that led me to having a blister, which took me probably like five or six days to finally heal. So just check your boobs, check your nipples constantly. That is the number one thing. Number one takeaway is that, and then it's very close second flange sizes. So again, I say all of that because those are things that um, I could have could have used in the beginning that would have helped me tremendously along this whole breastfeeding journey. So I hope that that helps you. So that is it for this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. Click that little subscribe button. If you are a new mama or you know of someone that is about to have a baby or anything of those things, feel free to share this video. Help them. Like I always say, like help my mistakes and what I did wrong. Help me help somebody else do it better. Learn from my mistakes because I have done my fair share of them in this whole process. If I can be praying for you guys this weekend anyway, drop those down below. I love to pray for you guys every single week. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful week, guys. Take care and God bless.